Kanye West and Blue have always been two of my favorite artists of all time, but at face value they seem to represent two opposing sides of hip hop. Kanye has been one of the biggest names in music for almost two decades. His music, while polarizing, has constantly stayed atop of the charts and at the forefront of conversation in the culture. While Blue, since his debut album in 2007, has weaved in and out of obscurity, giving us one of the most puzzling but impressive discographies of the underground. But when you really start to understand these two as artists and as people, you begin to realize that they're actually extremely similar. They both are rapper producers who gained prominence in the mid-2000s with their debut album, bridging the gap between old heads and backpackers with soul samples and introspective lyrics. Then over the next 15 years of their careers, they each released dozens of projects, all varying slightly in style, mood, and quality. They both have gone through eras where it felt like they were deliberately alienating their fans, pushing the limits of what their fan bases wanted to hear and support. They both have been known to go on wild Twitter rants, sometimes spawned from a simple case of mistaken identity, giving us iconic moments such as when Kanye was calling out Wiz Khalifa, or when Blue was going at Schoolboy because he thought he heard a diss, when really, Schoolboy was just talking about Glue. Kanye has been moving towards a future in fashion, and Blue always stated that he would like to retire and move into a film career. Both artists have modeled their careers after legendary avant-garde new wave film directors, Blue citing his biggest inspiration as Jean-Luc Godard, and Kanye having compared himself to Stanley Kubrick. Saying I miss the old Kanye has become something of a meme at this point, but if you go to any Blue video from the past 10 years, the comments are filled with people saying, I miss the old Blue, when will he start rapping like Below the Heavens again? and their discographies, while they stray from each other in many ways, hit a lot of the same notes. For every Jesus, there is a Jesus. For every Jesus is king, there is a God is good. The most important reason why these two artists are so respected is how they always keep their fans on their toes. I remember years ago I was reading an interview with Blue, where he said, every one of my albums is a different day in my life. Blue is over 25 projects and no two of them sound alike. And the same goes for Kanye. So many artists these days keep putting out the same album every couple of years or even every couple of months. But Blue and Kanye make music for life because life has so many different moods and feelings that it can't all be captured with one style. Neither of them are afraid to fail either. I'm sure there are people on Kanye's team who advised him not to make an auto-tuned R&B album at the height of his fame. Just like I'm sure Warner didn't want Blue's major label debut to be an electronic noise hop album. When Kanye started singing and using auto-tune, it seemed like a majority of his day one fans wanted him to go back to his old ways. But he stuck with it, and that sound caught up with him. Just like how throughout the 2010s fans were constantly getting frustrated with Blue for the poor audio quality of his recordings. But album after album he stuck with it until that sound caught up with him. That lo-fi sound that's now all the rage with artists like Makami or Mike, Blue was doing that back in 2011. Both Blue and Kanye were always ready to experiment with their sounds and a lot of times ended up being years ahead of the curve because of it. They both share a similar sentiment about not getting boxed into one sound or style. Take a listen to what Blue has to say about that here. But um, every project I approach, I don't want it to sound anything like anything else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Johnson Johnson, I think it's dirty, yo. It's some dirty, I'm just kicking bars. When that drop, that's not gonna sound like either of the previous two. You know what I'm saying? I got a, a rock album we did in a cut that probably will never be released. Whoever hears that, they gonna be like, that don't sound like nothing. And I did that a few years ago, you know, or a year ago. A year ago? Two years ago. You know what I'm saying? Bob Smiles, it's called Toothpaste. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's it. You know what I mean? It's a bunch of shit, yo. And it's like, all of it sounds different. I don't really want to, like, that's why I say I, don't, I won't be blue always. Everybody got attached to this old blue and exile. This is blue. That is, that is. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that. That is that. You know what I'm saying? I'm that and this and this over here. Tell me that doesn't sound like something that Kanye would say. Being a fan of Blue and Kanye for years, you really have to be ready for the unexpected. Another aspect of their creative process that they share is collaboration. Kanye is known for having a revolving door of rappers and producers in his studio at all times. On all of his solo albums, even though it's Kanye's name on the record, there are always dozens of producers and writers involved in helping Ye make the best music possible. In an interview back in 2014, Blue said, The way a jazz player will have different players on different albums as opposed to a band in the 80s who have been the same band through the 2000s, a jazz cat will change up the players every two records. Me changing my producers, working with a new team, is that same approach. One of the many things that sets Kanye apart is his fascination with the human voice. He layers vocal samples unlike anybody else. 
Kanye recorded through the wire with his mouth wired shut. Most artists wouldn't have even tried this, but he knew that his voice was an instrument and this would have a similar effect to putting a mute on a trumpet. Blue has a whole subsection of his discography where the audio quality is purposefully unmixed. He has multiple whole albums that sound like they were recorded on a flip phone, and he did this because he understands that it would add to the feel of the song. Take a listen to Jesus Walks and focus on the layers here. God show me the way because the devil's trying to break me down. You have Kanye on top, then the choir, then the drill sergeant giving the bum, bum, bum on the bottom. And now listen to What If I Was by Blue. Oh. What if it ain't ours? What if it ain't you? What will we win then? What if we can't lose? What if I can't lose? What can we can't do? What then can cage us? Same shit I break through. He is rapping along with the ad libs and has two separate soul samples in the background. And then he has that high pitched falsetto singing underneath just to highlight the human voice. Later on that same album, Blue gives one of my favorite vocal performances of all time on Birds and Bees. This isn't one of my favorite vocal performances because of Blue's great singing chops or anything. It's how he lowers his voice when he says the word bees to give that extra emphasis. It's about how he perfectly layers his voice on the hook. It's about how he uses his ad-libs as a sort of call and response. The range that his voice is giving us in this song feels like it could be four to five people recording it. And that is just like Kanye. He by no means is a perfect vocalist, but what he's able to do on 808s and Heartbreak far surpasses any limits he may have with his vocal ability. What he's able to do with autotune is the same exact techniques that Blue is using, except one is just a little glossier. As Kanye and Blue entered the second stage of their careers, they began to experiment with their sound more. In the year 2013, they both pushed the limits of what modern hip-hop could be with their albums York and Yeezus. Both of these albums are noisy and experimental, and at times industrial and abrasive, boasting distorted drums and low-resolution synthesizers. The College Dropout trilogy and Below the Heavens were all about the human behind the music. The lyrics were personal, the beats felt human, and the whole project felt natural. But York and Yeezus were just the opposite. They were electronic to their core, at times feeling like a malfunctioning computer of the 90s. But as each of these albums come to a close, they come back to their soulful, humanity-filled sound that we all expect from them. Bound 2 and My Sunshine both occupy the same role on these albums. They were a sign that Blue and Kanye are back in touch with reality and themselves. Both of these songs were about love and feelings that we have when we are at our most vulnerable. This album for each of them came at a point when they were at a crossroads in their life. There were rumors of both of them battling addiction and mental illness, and the journey that these albums take you on as a listener helps guide you through that. Both of these albums get a lot of hate from their diehard fans, but they're both essential records in their catalogs. These records are both one of a kind, and something that can only come from the mind of either Blue or Kanye. Each of them dabble in experimental sounds later in their careers, but they never went quite as far as they do here. Both of these artists have hundreds and hundreds of songs covering a wide variety of topics, but there is one through line they both keep coming back to, and it's their religion and their spirituality. In Jesus Walks, perhaps Kanye's most known foray into this topic, he states, So here goes my single dog, the radio needs this. They say you can rap about anything except for Jesus. That means guns, sex, lies, videotape, but if I talk about God, my record won't get played. Blue brings up a similar sentiment on the title track to 2011's Jesus LP, saying, Would you read it if he speaks it? Would you peep it if he leaked it? I had the homie push eject on the secret like keep it. Blue echoes Kanye's statement trying to understand why the masses won't accept a song preaching the gospel, even if it's disguised as a typical mixtape or dope track. One thing that Kanye always seemed to struggle with is where he fits into his faith. On I Am A God, which at face value is a song rooted in complete blasphemy, Kanye raps, I am a God, even though I am a man of God, my whole life is in the hands of God. Here he is coming to terms with the fact that even though in his head the world is revolving around him, he knows that God, the higher power, is always above him. He places those two lines back to back, highlighting how those two thoughts can't coexist, and he's trying to understand that. On one of my all-time favorite blues songs, Amen, he deals with a similar issue. He raps, Who do you believe in? I know it ain't me. I hope it ain't a priest or who you see on TV. I hope it ain't your papa partner. 
He only raised you. And I know it ain't your mom, even though that's who you came through. I'm asking who you pray to. Some believe in angels, some believe in one God, some believe in Jesus, some believe in all of it. And I don't mean a part of it ain't true. I know that someone started it, and I know it ain't you. Here Blue is trying to come to terms with the fact that he doesn't know everything, or even much at all. And this brings us back to why both of these artists are so revered. They're extremely personal with their writing. They don't make religious songs as an evangelical tool. They simply use the music to help themselves and possibly others find understanding in themselves and a higher power. And while Blue has never went full gospel with an album like Jesus is King, I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a step into that direction for his next project. After all, him and Kanye's careers always seem to be moving parallel to each other. Except one is below the surface, and the other is up in outer space. And maybe these comparisons aren't even a coincidence at all. In an interview back in 2014, Blue was asked if there's any sounds or styles that he hasn't done yet that he would like to try. And this is his response. Yes, but that's a secret. Can't expose those next steps. I have to let Kanye drop his record. I always let people know about my record after Kanye drops. Blue has said over the years that Kanye is one of his favorite rappers, so I'm not surprised when I see that Blue has kept a close eye on Kanye's career and has drawn some influence from him over the years. And it also wouldn't surprise me if Kanye has been keeping up with Blue's career as well. They both spawned from the same backpacker era from the early 2000s, and while Kanye certainly has evolved past this scene, he has been known to keep an ear to the underground, still working with artists like Consequence and West Side Gun to this day. I'm not sure where Kanye will be going with his next project, but I'm hoping it's something along the lines of Miles by Blue and Exile. Kanye has been putting out these 7 to 8 song albums over the past couple years, just like Blue. For a while, Blue was releasing multiple EPs a year, but a full length solo project was hard to come by. With Miles, he got back to his roots and gave us almost an hour and a half of classic music. Him and Exile worked on the album for almost 3 years before releasing it, and even scrapped a whole trap project in the process. This is why I'm not mad that Donda was postponed. Kanye has so much to say to the world, so I really want him to take his time and give us his version of Miles. Because we all know that Ye has traveled so far in his career and has grown so much. Both of these artists have gone through such drastic ups and downs throughout the years, but looking as a fan they both seem to be in good places at this point. They both should be gearing up to release new music soon, and I have absolutely no idea what to expect, and that's how it should be. If I've learned anything from being a longtime fan of both of these artists, is to expect the unexpected. So who knows, maybe we'll get a Blue and Kanye collaboration one of these days. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll have another video up for you guys soon. Thanks for watching.